Hi there, I'm Black Bright and I'm broadcasting out of the UK into your homes around the world. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to like, subscribe or share. Existing subscribers, thank you as usual for your support, for your comments and your questions. Um, today's video is for, for my um, relationship series. I do relationships videos every now and then. And I find them the most difficult to do because I try to extract myself out of it and um, depersonalize it. But sometimes I can't help stepping, putting myself in a position and using myself and my experiences as an example. But this um, video is called, How Can You Create the New You? Um, I came up with that because um, I think in order for us to change and evolve, some of us have to create ourselves or recreate ourselves. Some of us are stuck in a mould which we've had for years and it's not getting us anywhere. We're not improving, our situation isn't changing and we are criticising everybody else and we're wondering why things aren't going right and we're not looking at ourselves. We're pointing fingers. And so what this video um, is meant to do is to help you look at yourself, see what options you have, see if you can create a new you or even if you want to create a new you usually people who remain the same they remain the same because they want to they're usually obstinate they normally think they're okay they don't think they have to change they just been they've been that way for so long they just think hey this is who i am this is how i'm going to be and it doesn't really matter to them whether or not they're in a relationship, whether or not they're not. They usually justify not being in a relationship by saying, oh, you know, it's great and this is how I want to be. So this is only for those people who are not happy with the way they are. They're not happy with the way th things are. They're not happy with relationships and friendships. And so they want to kind of change things. They want to recreate themselves. And they want to be, they want to create a new them. So, if you woke up tomorrow morning and you wanted to create a new you, what would she look like? How would she behave? What would her friends be like? Just try to think about that for a moment because, you know, the imagination takes you beyond limitations and it helps you to create an image in your mind. So the first thing you have to do in order to recreate yourself is to imagine how you would like that person to be. Sometimes I, I'd like to be more tolerant. Sometimes I would like to be less impulsive. The new you, the new me, if I wanted a new me and I wanted to wake up tomorrow and find a new me, I, I kind of think that, what would she be like? Hmm. Like I said, she'd probably be a bit more tolerant. She probably would be um, a bit more confident. She wouldn't be so fearful. She would step out a lot more in faith I think she wouldn't turn off the tv every time a um a violent scene came on and she wouldn't cower if she saw a spider I think the new me would be more courageous yeah I think she'd be more courageous so that's what you need to do you need to kind of imagine what a new you would look like so, and also, who, do, who would your new you remind you of? Because some of us, we see people and we think, oh, I wish I was like her. You know, I, I often try to imagine what my, who my role model is. And I can never think of any. At one point, it was Maya Angelou. But... I think that was because she's kind of creative, she's um, articulate, she's expressive. And another time it was Tina Turner. I love Tina Turner. 
So yeah, but I wouldn't really want to be like Tina Turner, but I love her energy. I kind of question the way she dances, but yeah, I love her energy and I loved her youthfulness. So yeah, it'd be people like that if I was going to emulate someone. What else do you need to do? What prevents you from being the person you want to be? That's another thing. Like, okay, if I wanted to be Tina Turner, I don't really want to sing. I don't want to dance up and down on the stage like she does, but I love her energy. Um, so I guess it would be about maybe I'd have to read about what inspires her, what motivates her. I probably have to find out a bit more about her, maybe. I don't like the fact, well, we probably have a similar past, so we might have a lot in common. I find that people who've had a challenging past, we're fighters. And we don't put up with much nonsense. Um, you know, we can be pretty um, calm and amenable, but we kind of stand our ground a little bit. So I think people who've had a challenging past tend to be quite strong. I'm probably a bit like her, actually, even though I don't know it. I don't know her. I just see her celebrity side, so I don't know what she's really like. But I like the way she presents herself. Um, what else? Um... Some people find it difficult to imagine. I mean, I always found it difficult to visualise. You know, like in some of these um, videos, they say, oh, visualise yourself in this situation, visualise. I've always found it difficult to visualise. But I could imagine myself in a certain situation. Like, if I imagined myself in a loving relationship, what would that look like? And then you kind of think, well, how would that, how would that appear to you? To you, what is a loving relationship? How does that look? Um, for me, I wrote down a few things. It would look like a lot of laughter, a lot of fun. Um, it would be light-hearted. It would be affectionate. You know, it would be one of those relationships where you walk up and down together. You do simple things. You spoon. You cuddle. Um... To me, a loving relationship isn't heavy. It's not hard work. A happy relationship, I should say. Or a fulfilling relationship. I don't think a, relation, a fulfilling relationship should be hard work. It shouldn't be an uphill struggle. So I think, um, so then, so you can kind of vision, if that is one of your um, things that you're looking for, um, okay, they'd be charismatic and interesting, good communication, sexual compatibility, and similar values. So that's another thing. So if you're looking to create a new you, the new you would like to create this relationship that you want. So then you'd have to kind of imagine what that relationship is going to look like. Because when you're recreating yourself, you kind of um, write down the things that you want and write down how you'd like to be and things like that. Um, but you have to know um, what that is. And a lot of it is about the imagination. If you just sit in your normal frame of mind, coming home from work, sitting on a chair with your dressing gown on, stuffing your face with food, that's not a good kind of posture to, to use your imagination. You have to kind of sit upright. You have to be ready to absorb what it is out there that you want. So you have to bring that energy into yourself and into your environment. Otherwise, you just remain the same and your situation remains the same. You have to be receptive. A lot of people reject things. They reject anything that feels uncomfortable. And if you want to create a new person, you can't keep rejecting what feels uncomfortable. You have to learn to embrace and grow with it and just, you know, just find life and see life as a learning, uh, a learning ground, because that is what life is. You didn't come on to this earth to remain the same. You didn't come on this earth perfect. You came on this earth to improve yourself, to learn from others. Everybody's put in your life for a reason. And every, every, they say for a reason, a season or a lifetime. And so when people come into your life, you have to ask yourself, why is this person in my life? If they're giving you grief, why is that person giving you grief? What is it, is it about yourself 
that you're not seeing? Why are you attracting certain people? You know what I mean? And you have to kind of analyse that. Not just say, oh, I can't stand that person. I always attract the same types. I'm, you know, I shouldn't be in this relationship. No, the relationship is there to teach you something. What is it there to teach you? And if you keep going back in that relationship, it's there to help you grow. It's there so you can learn from the other person. Normally, people are there's something in the person that will tell you about yourself. So you just have to kind of analyse and work out what it is. What could this person possibly be trying to show me? How can this person benefit me? And that's what we have to understand, regardless of what a person looks like, what a person is doing, a person will come into your life to teach you a lesson. And you have to be open enough to, to see what that lesson is and see whether or not you're ready to learn it. Some people are not ready to learn it. So they push people away and they keep making the same mistakes over and over again. But there will be a time when they come around and finally accept, OK, this is not working. What I'm doing is not working. I've been working this way for years and it's just simply not working. So what do I need to do differently? And this is about creating the new you, recognising what is working in your life as opposed to what is not. And not sticking your heels in every time that you don't like something. And that's what some people do. You know, once people get used to a certain way, there's a lady at work. I'm always using my work colleagues. But there's a lady at work. She's been alone so long. She could, Number one, she can't imagine being with anybody or being in a relationship. But on top of that, she doesn't want to change herself. She doesn't want to make any compromises. She just wants to go home, stick her food in her microwave, get under the covers and watch, and watch the soaps. That's perfect for her. It might be perfect for her, it might not be perfect for you. But if that's what you're doing and you would like something different, you need to see how you can change things, how you can recreate yourself to invite a different kind of outcome. So every outcome is not the same. What else is there? Um, sometimes in relationships, um, they say, oh, you know, if only I had this, if only I had more money, if only I didn't have a mortgage, if only I didn't, if I had a bigger house, uh, you know, things like that. If I had a better relationship and you have to ask yourself, if you had more money, how would that improve your life? List how it would improve your life. If you had a bigger house, apart from more work, how would that improve your current situation? And see whether or not having more money, once you've worked out how it will improve your situation, apart from giving you more options, how it will improve your lifestyle, could you possibly have any of that without the money? Is it possible for you to have, to enjoy a, your, the house that you're in, even though it's not large enough to accommodate everything you want? So it's about, you know, having dreams knowing we want a better quality of life but still try to make yourself happy with what you have you know accepting what you have and being content with what you have but you can still hope for something better but that's not what's determining you as a person who you are and you know your happiness basically um nearly finished um yeah, sometimes we kind of misunderstand people, don't we? And have you ever been in a relationship where you just keep knocking heads? Well, I was listening to a video today and it was talking about how every single second we, our brains take in two million pieces of information. Two million for each second in a day. What it do then does, it then filters out and we're left with 138,000 pieces of information for each second in every day. Now, you know, if you, if you retained all that information, your head would burst, wouldn't it? So what it does, it filters out what it needs. It filters out what's relevant. And as a consequence, 
even though each one of us, somebody could be sitting next to me here on my right, somebody could be sitting on my left, and there could be me in the middle. We all have this 138,000 pieces of information that we're filtering out. Um, because depending on our circumstances, we are going to take, and our background, we are going to extract what is relevant to us and our experiences. So that means if we was to see something, that I'm going to ignore that phone. Um, if we was to see something, we would all see it differently and that's why one person will look at a situation or an incident and it will we'll all have different viewpoints of it because it depends on our filtering system it depends on how on our perception of things it depends on our values so when you're talking with a partner or a friend or anyone for that matter that person's viewpoint is going to differ from yours, even though you're in the same room, even though you're watching the same program, even though you, you might be talking about the same thing, because your filtering system is different. And somebody who has less to filter is going to remember more. And somebody who has more to filter is going to remember less. So why it might look like somebody saying, oh, you know, you're not paying attention, you're not listening to me. It's not that they're not listening. It's because they've, they've filtered out things that they didn't think that they would need. And now you're asking them to recall it and they can't remember. So, and that's what can cause misunderstandings. So when you're thinking about creating the new you, it is about paying attention to the person you are with in that particular moment. Today, I was, I was when I was listening to that video and about... 139,000 pieces. I was thinking, okay, I've got my earphones in. I'm listening to the video. I'm typing up my work that I'm, I'm meant to be doing, and which takes a lot of different steps. There are people in front of me chatting that I can hear, but I'm not listening to. There were people, another set of people who were behind me talking that I could hear, but I wasn't honing into what they were saying. Behind me, the other side, the phone was ringing. Another person's mobile phone was ringing. As I glanced up, I saw somebody walking up um, with a big parcel in her hand. And I was thinking to myself, I'm not retaining all of that because I don't need it. But I could see it, I could hear it, and I'm sure that's how the brain works. It just gets rid of it. And all I need for that particular moment is what I'm, what I'm listening to, because they reckon you can absorb seven pieces of information at the same time. So all I needed to do was listen to the, um, the video, which is one thing, and I'm also looking on my computer, which is another thing, using the keyboard, which is a third thing, um, looking on the piece of paper that I need to extract um, information from is a fifth thing, and I'm inputting. And it worked out to about be about seven things, and that's all I really needed to concentrate at the same time. So if somebody else is gonna ask me for something about something totally different, I would have zoned out. And they might say, but I only told you that a few minutes ago. Weren't you listening? Yes, listening then, I'm not listening now, and it's gone. I didn't think I would need that information. And that's what our brain does. It gets rid of information we don't need. So it does cause a lot of disruption in relationships. But if you're aware of it, it can help you to relate to people differently. So instead of getting angry and impatient and frustrated, you can kind of accept that people don't always hear what you say, accept that people might misunderstand you and you can have better relationships. And this, this new you will be quite pleasant, a pleasant person to be with. People will enjoy your company and they won't see you as impatient and intolerant and all those kind of things. So I think I'm going to stop you that, stop it there. They say maturity is the ability to master frustration, oversensitivity and anger. So be mature, be a mature adult. Um, I think I've covered most of it. Yeah, and I just as a final point, I said, once we understand that we will know how to deal with others how to accept ourselves and how to create 
relationships generally. So I hope you like the way I've explained how to create the new you. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.